What is going on guys, this is John here for Skimpton YouTube and welcome back to another video in the C-Sharp development tutorials guys. And today we're going to continue with voice recognition. Uh, the feedback on the last video was just absolutely incredible guys, so thank you very very much for that. Um, so I definitely wanted to continue with this tutorial. Um, I also mentioned in the previous video I did that um, I had a very important presentation, therefore I couldn't upload a video for quite a long time. So guys, I'm sorry for that guys, uh, but I'm back now and we're going to continue with speech recognition. Alright, so today I'm going to show you how to make your program or your application talk back to you. And that's really quite handy, especially if you have voice recognition. You probably don't want to display some message, bo message boxes, like here, for instance. Um, so you definitely don't want to do that. So instead, we're going to implement a system which allows you to talk to the application. And we could even take this a little further and say we want to have a proper conversation with your application. So maybe you ask a question and then the program is going to respond to that question and maybe ask another question and then you can answer that question again and then an interaction uh, with you know some other classes or whatever is uh, going to happen. Is going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, guys, I'm going to show you how to use the speech dot synthesis namespace right now and the speech synthesizer class. So, what we're going to do, we're going to add another using statement. And in the previous video, I said that all of these things are classes, but they are not. They namespaces. I'm so sorry. I don't know what was wrong with me then, but yeah, <laughs> they are namespaces. Sorry for that. Okay. So, system dot speech dot synthesis. That's the namespace we're going to use. And the class we're going to use is, as I already mentioned, the speech synthesizer class. All right, so now we're just going to call the synthesizer equals to a new speech synthesizer, and this doesn't have constructor which takes any arguments. So now I'm going to show you how simple it is to use this. So right now, what I want to do real quick, I want to add another command to this, and I'm just going to do one command, which is speak selected text. And by the way, guys, I'm also going to show you how to use the prompt builder. Okay, so that's also a really interesting topic. Okay, so what we want to do now, <laughs> we want to just replace this method, message box that's show, we want to replace it with synthesizer dot speak async. That's it. That's all we have to do. And now guess what? It works. Yeah, that's all we have to do. So now if you enable the voice control and use the command say hello, we you know, the synthesizer is going to speak to us, or the application is going to speak to us. So let's hear what's going on. Say hello. Hello, Johnny. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um. So that's all we have to do. Okay. So of course it would be kind of weird if we if I end up the video right now. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to talk a little bit more about how to change different things. So. I think you just heard that there's a pause in between um, this sentence and this sentence, and it's quite a long pause. It seems a little odd, um, especially if you kind of you know want to simulate a conversation. So to get rid of that, um, you could also just remove the space right here. And if we start the application now, I think that this would change something. Uh, say hello. Hello, Johnny. Dot. How are you? Hmm. Well, not really good. So as you can see, I was wrong with that. So there's absolutely no way of getting rid of this pause. Or is there? Yeah, there is. Of course. I mean, that would be kind of a crappy class, wouldn't it? So what we're going to do, we're going to add another case right now. This I know this is not really on topic, but let's use speak selected text. And I'm going to show you how to speak a text you select in, if you want to do a speech to text program. Just recreate. That's really simple to do. So I just want to cover this right now. Um, so synthesizer dot speak async. We're essentially going to use the exact same command, and then we're going to refer to our rich text box, and we're going to refer to the selected text. Okay, that's all we have to do. So now, if we start the application, and we enable the voice control and select this text, it's basically going to say that. Speak select the text. Log. Great. <coughs> okay. Really cool, isn't it? So now you could just enter in some text and, you know, the application could speak that text for you. Well, if you want that, I don't know. But now we're going to get into how to use the prompt builder. And that basically allows you to add all these little tweaks to the speech which the application outputs. So right now you can see it says, hello, Johnny, how are you? Okay, and a huge break. So we kind of want to get rid of that break. 
and we also can add some we can also add some uh, emphasis on these like different different words and on the entire sentence which I think is pretty amazing and which can also add um, or things like the prompt style so that would be like if it's really fast or if it's extra soft in terms of you know the volume maybe um, and you can even add a different voice and all these things have different methods and different kind of enums which you can use to set this up so that's essentially what I want to show you right now and the speak async method has three parameters you can use, so three overloads for that method and that would be the string, the prompt letter and something else. I'm not quite sure what it is right now. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Um, what's the command again? P? No, okay. Well, I don't want to print it. I'm sorry. Alright, so let me just... Yeah, here we go. So the prompt, prompt letter and text-to-speech. Okay, so these three arguments. Alright, so what we want to do now, we want to create a prompt builder object. So all we have to do is use prompt builder, and we're just going to call this builder equals to a new prompt builder. Okay, now we could pass through some arguments, but we're not going to do that. And now we're going to need to use the start sentence method. That would be the first method we're going to cover. So now we're just going to use start sentence, and now you can see we have all these different options right here. So we could also say we're going to use a start style, and then we'd have to pass through this prompt style. So this prompt style would basically some, would be something like um, if it's fast or not. Uh, so you could add... No, actually it's not. That's not what I mean. Um, the prompt style... Uh, okay, let me just show show it to you. Okay, so we're going to have a new prompt style. Um, and now you can see we have, for example, prompt emphasis, prompt rate, and prompt volume. So those are the different things you can do. You can emphasize different things in your sentence. Uh, you can speak the sentence at a sentence at a different rate, and you can also increase the volume or decrease the volume, whatever you want, which I think is pretty amazing. So now we're just gonna use the start sentence method right now, and we can also use the start paragraph and all that stuff. So that would be something which I could cover in additional tutorials uh, on that topic, guys. Um, I also wanna actually talk to you a little bit right now. Um, I'm sorry, but I just wanna ask you something. So I think there are two ways of doing this series right now, the C Sharp development tutorials. The first way would be um, that I just create tutorials for certain topics, certain things like uh, this voice recognition for instance, or maybe even real-time scripting support for your applications, enabling your applications to allow other developers to create plugins maybe, and those are completely different topics which have nothing to do with each other. So that would be one option, but the other option would be something similar to what I'm doing with the, um, what is it, like the Android Studio app development tutorials. Um, so basically, I would create one application with you and a different part. So I would work on an application, I would tell you what to do, I would tell you how to achieve different things, and you could basically take part in this whole development process and everything. So that would be another option, guys. Um, please tell me in the comments what you guys want. So either one is fine, okay? Just just tell me in the comments, and I'm going to decide for one of these things. If you don't comment, I will just decide for one thing, and you probably, probably won't like that. So please take part in this little poll, I guess you could say. Um, okay, but now let's continue with this tutorial. So builder.start sentence, and now all we have to do is we have to append a text. So builder.append text, and then we can pass through just a string. So what do we have in our text right here? I think it's hello Johnny. Yes, exactly. So now we could pass through hello Johnny, and that's it. That's it, and now we can end the sentence. So builder.start end sentence. Now I think this won't really get rid of the kind of time span problems. So, but I do want to get rid of the time span problems. So to achieve that, I'm going to show you how to do this in a second. Alright, so now let's just end the sentence. Okay, we, we just did that. Alright, so now we could just start with the next sentence, which would be how are you. But we want to alternate these things a little bit. And we want to use the append break method which allows us to append a custom break to our text. And you have to put this in between sentences. Of course, you could put this at start, but this seems a little bit odd. Um, so now, as you can see, we could add a prompt break. That would also be something we could do. So prompt break, and then we could have extra large, extra small. So we have this little enum. Um, and now we're just going to use this enum, and I'm going to show you how to use a time span as well. So now we're just going to use the enum right here. 
and now we can just start the next sentence so start sentence like that uh, now we can append the next text so it will be uh, how are you how are you and we can see in our arguments you can also comment you could have different emphasis on things so now I could say okay we want to have a strong emphasis a moderate emphasis not sad reduce or yeah we just gonna use a strong emphasis right now and we're gonna see how it is so I don't really know I've not tested all of these things so I, I will be pretty I don't know shocked if there's something really weird going on uh, I won't be but you know it's just funny to hear <laughs> what it's doing with this so and sentence of course I'm sorry okay so that's all we have to do. And now in our speak async method, we're just going to pass through the prompt builder. So all we have to pass through is builder. That's it. Okay. So now we can start the application and listen to the result. Say hello. Hello, Johnny. How are you? Okay, I think this is an even longer break. I don't really know if this is a, s a small break. I don't really think so. Let's use extra small, so maybe that's going to change things up a little bit. Say hello. Hello, Johnny. How are you? What? Okay. <laughs> this doesn't seem to change anything at all. Uh, I forgot the question mark. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I don't really hear a different emphasis, to be honest. Seems a little odd, truth be told. Um, anyways, so let's append a break and let's use a time span right now. So as you can see, this isn't really doing anything for us. So let's append a time span. So all we have to pass through is a new time span. And that's a struct. Yeah, that's a struct. Um, so now you can see we have different arguments. So that would be like the ticks. Um, that's also something you have if you want to sleep a thread. So that's really uh, really similar. And then we could pass through like hours. That would <laughs> what would be pretty funny if you take a, like a service application which runs in the background, and then you could like after one hour or so of running the service application, you could like increase the volume dramatically and then uh, speak something, and then you know everyone would be creeped out as fuck. But uh, let's not do any of that, okay? So let's just add some seconds here. So maybe one second would be good, I guess. Alright, so that's all we have to do, and now we can start this application and see if this made any difference. I don't think so. Say hello. Hello, Johnny. How are you? Okay, I think this is this is pretty exact. This could be exactly one second. Um, oh, what did I do? Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. One constructor. I completely messed it up right now. But yeah, uh, so you can see you have like hours you could wait for days. Um, but I'm just going to do uh, milliseconds right now. So zero, 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 and like, I don't know, 50 milliseconds? I don't know. Well, that seems good. Alright, another parenthesis here, and now let's stop this. Say hello. Hello, Johnny. How are you? Okay, this does not seem to do anything, to be honest. Um, it doesn't really seem to be adding a break here. Um, which I think is a little odd. So yeah, I don't really know what's up with that. Um, but it should actually add a break. Well, anyways, uh, I think this will be left off for another tutorial. But it's cool, isn't it? So yeah, that's what you can do with this. Which I think is absolutely amazing, guys. So, that's it for this tutorial, I guess. Because I don't really want to have that tutorial that long. So if you want another one on voice recognition... I'm going to be able to upload it way faster than before because, you know, I don't have a presentation again. So, yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I hope it helped you a little bit. Um, and I'm going to do some re research why this isn't working, but it should append a break, technically. It's not doing... I don't know why it's not doing that, but this is technically how it should work. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching this video, guys, and i see you in another tutorial.